The familiar face next to me belongs to Peter Bull, an English actor whose villainous characters have given him many opportunities to work in America. Uh, what brings you firstly to the country now? Well, I'm here to, um, because a film called Dr. Doolittle, in which I play a small part, is opening, and there's a great deal of hoo-ha-ha gone on about it. And um, I sort of share the billing with a skunk, which I play with, um, which upstages me a great deal and finally bit me in the behind during one of the scenes. That's really why I'm here, really, to promote Dr. Doolittle. Oh, not to promote the skunk. I mean, the skunk, no, no. The skunk needs no promotion at all. Then, then you always play... Uh, uh, Villainous characters or generals? What do you play in this? Uh, colonels? Uh, I play a really horrid fox hunting uh, general with a very loud voice. They had to take the sound down a great deal during the shooting. And um, I, you see, um, all against the foxes, whereas Dr. Doolittle's very keen on foxes. And Dr. Doolittle keeps on sort of looking after the foxes and indeed hiding them in his overalls and preventing me from hunting him. You always play the mean characters. I mean, you played in... Well, because I'm such a mean person, you see, and I think I'm always cast to type, really. Are you I've never acted with animals before. It's, a, it's an absolute new experience to me, and uh, my first scene in the film, I have to bring a plow horse through a sitting room, which is not when I first went on the stage, the sort of job I was, thought I'd be asked to do ever. And uh, I bring this plow horse into the surgery where Dr. Doolittle is attending to about 250 animals. Well, the noise was so deafening, I couldn't hear myself speak. And I really got into deep trouble with the words because I couldn't concentrate with all this noise. I didn't know that they were going to synchronize all the words afterwards. And I got in a terrible state. And Rex Harrison came up to me and said, oh, don't worry. It's, it's, this isn't like acting at all. And it wasn't. And um, after that first dreadful day, I got used to it. But we, of course, we had to wait for the animals. Did you really uh, f find any animal that you absolutely adored on the set? I mean, you know, I was very keen on the chimpanzee. Yeah. Um, that was the nicest animal. Did he, how was he on you? I mean, did he, did he feel? Um, he was all right on me. He was better than the skunk, I will say that. <laughs> it was the skunk I really hated. I really loathed that skunk. I'm going to write him some non-fan letters, I think, as a result of this film. What happens when you do a great part like that? Does it sometimes happen that they take out part oh, of it? Oh, I, I remain on the cutting room floor in a great many films. In Dr. Strangelove, I had a whole scene that was cut clean out, which um, ended up with Peter Sellers and me throwing custard pies at each other. That scene was entirely cut out of the film and we took three weeks shooting it. I bet it was hilarious when you did it. I mean, well, I think it was very funny when we did it. Why did they take it out? Uh, because the director, Stanley Kubrick, thought it was in the wrong film. And um, they throw, a sh uh, they have shaving soap instead of custard pies, and it coagulates on your skin. And we find it very difficult to eat because we had to, you know, we had to keep continuity. So we always had to have the same block. Exactly the same. And that was dreadful. And the whole scene after three weeks went out. Entirely it was cut out of it. Uh, I hope to see it separately one day. The, the ends of things that were never shown would make one of the great films, wonderful. I'll bet. One of the, one of the wonderful films. In uh, Dr. Strangelove, you played a, uh, a general. I played the Russian ambassador. So. And I think I'm probably on their blacklist now, and I probably shan't be allowed to go there, I expect, because I, I played it very unattractively. You always play military men? I mean, that, that type of thing. I've seen you, by the way, in African Queen. Weren't you also a uh, military? A African Queen. I was a captain of a boat, yes. And I, I, I married Catherine Hepburn. And I, mean, I didn't marry her, actually, but I married Catherine Hepburn and Humphrey Bogart just before I had them hanged. That's having a tremendous revival in the So York, I get right? that. Yeah, and uh, young people are seeing it for the first time and coming back amazed at what a great film it is. It was a splendid film. Yes, we have to sort of stop now for, of course. for a second to do uh, our regular uh, uh, production commercial bit. So we'll be back in just a few seconds. You say you're, you're very villainous and a miserable character, and I'll accept it, because what, what I'd like to know is something that you always hear about, but I'd, I'd like to really know what's happening now with English people as far as their reaction to America. Is it as strongly anti-American as it was a few years ago, or because of the fact that France is shifting over? You appall uh, me when you say this. Why, why do you think we're anti-American? I just had a feeling at one time that Not there was Not from I, well, I don't think at all. No, I don't think at all. You're going to talk nice about us now. Well, certainly. I'm, I'm, oh, on, I'm, I'm on your territory. I love it. I've spent the last three Christmases here. I, I, I really prefer living. It's a terrible thing. To, I hope the English aren't listening. Uh, I'd rather prefer, I'd prefer to live over here than... Um, than in England. Actually, I prefer to live in Greece, oddly enough, where I've got a small house. 
Um, I brought, I br actually, I brought my worry beads, if I can just yeah, find them. That's what so, the hippies wear, right? Well, certainly, but I'm in, uh, in case I was worried. But I'm not worried at all, so that's why I haven't been using them. But you, usually I'm like this, you see, like this very, terrible very stage. Very nervous, really. You, yeah. you, you, you've played on the stage here in, in I was, America I was for heard, the last couple of years, right? I was heard in black comedy. I was right. heard in Luther. And I was here in a musical play which wasn't a success called Pickwick. Don't they have to shift an American actor over for you when you come over here? Two American actors, Two, usually, uh, because of a size. But, um, who did they shift for you? Do you know? <laughs> I can't remember. But Pickwick was the only approach. I mean, I wish, I wish I was musical. I was in Pickwick. I was paid not to sing because um, I started singing. I, I love being in musicals. And then the chorus said, "Could possibly, could it possibly be that Mr. Bull wouldn't sing because it puts us off so?" So I wasn't allowed to sing at all. And so then I used to mouth the words of the songs, when I go like, like this. And I thought I was doing frightfully well. And then the musical director suddenly said, um, we've also did a bit that song. And uh, one side of the stage sing one line, and the other side of the stage sing the next line. So will you kindly keep your trap shut when your side isn't singing? I hadn't noticed, because I just thought, How do you feel about it? I mean, does it knock your ego down tremendously? I mean, tremendously, but I, I, but I was allowed to be on the gramophone record. I mean, I wasn't actually singing on the gramophone record, but I went to the session, and I was paid a quarter of a quarter of a quarter of 1% or whatever it was. Well, that can I, add up to a lot in the record. It has so indeed. Oh, yes, I've had several shillings under Are you sort of, you know, I have a feeling about uh, Peter Bull, but John Bull is a representative of, of, of uh, England, right? I mean, he's the figure. I'm a typical Englishman, do you? No, I don't know enough. I always have trouble. I must tell you this. Whenever I happen to have dealing with, with people in England, I always have a tremendous problem, and I'll tell you why. Their accent always throws me off. I always figure they're going to be the most honest, most trustworthy people in the world. And I must tell you, I've been skunked so many times by the English in my normal dealings with them, and it's really a... They've a done you done, have they? They, they have, and I, and I think it's always because of the accent. That always throws me off. I figure, how can anybody do wrong when you, <laughs> when you have an accent like well, that? Well, I right? apologize on behalf of... And you don't have that trouble with Americans? Never, never, as yet, no. You are turning out to be a pussycat. Well, I, I, I'm not... No, I'm not, um, I'm not sort of trying to m make myself agreeable. I, I found your taxi drivers polite. I found everybody, everyone, everyone whom everyone said would be terrible to me. They're always very nice. I did have a bit of a trouble with a fat lady in Bloomingdale's yesterday, but um, otherwise everything. Be, what happened with the fat lady? I'd rather not, not discuss it. It was just about um, some uh, 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 an article I wanted and she wanted, and she won. She was heavier than me, if you, if you can believe that. She tore it out of your hands. I'm afraid so. Yes. She really. <laughs> Peter. <laughs> That's fine. I, I, I'd, I'd like to see that. I don't think you could possibly lose anything. It was a very you. ugly scene. Yeah. <laughs> Which do you prefer, doing the movies or, or being on stage? I mean, it's a normal question. Well, I, I like the movies because there's a rather more money in it, I'm afraid, and that's a terrible thing to say, but we're very keen on dollars these days, as you know. In fact, our pound has taken a bit of a nosedive. I don't understand the ethics of it, but um, uh, dollars are nicer. Uh, plays I like if I haven't got to be in them a very long time, but I've been in a lot of avant-garde plays recently where people um, speak out in the audience. We have in, in England, in audi uh, audiences in England, say very rude things, which they don't do here at all. I was in a play called Waiting for Godot, yes. which I never quite understood. And um, I remember people used to rush out of the theatre, used to slam their seats. They hated it. They either hated the play or loved it. And they used to slam their seats. And one day, I was, I'd been on the stage for about um, 10 minutes, and I suddenly heard a woman in the front row say, I do wish the fat one would go. <laughs> and um, I, I've never been insulted, actually, on the stage while I was doing it. But, but, but I, I have found recently that, that all the plays I've been in have, accept, have um, sort of caused a great deal of comment. I think it's rather virile and good, actually. Mm -hmm. But over here, you all sit rather quiet as mice we're, we're, we're and say everything's good. lovely. We don't boo at all. No, do. we don't boo. We just we don't come back for the second half sometimes. That's all right. That, that, that happens occasionally. Mr. Bull, it's a great, great pleasure to have you here, and I hope everybody in, enjoyed as much as I enjoyed you here. Will you uh, please come back again? Oh, please, yes. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. much. Thank right. you.